Hi everyone, welcome back to chemistry. This is just gonna be a quick pre-lab video that you need to watch before you can do lab one, which is all about density of aluminum and iron. So we're gonna determine the density of different types of metals um, using different methods. So let's take a quick detour over here to recap. If you haven't watched the 2.7 density video, you might wanna do that before lab. It's probably gonna help you out quite a bit. Um, but density is a relationship between mass the mass of a substance and the volume of that substance we have. Um, and remember, we always report the mass in grams for density and the volume in either cm cubed or mils, depending on whether we have a solid or a liquid, okay? Um, and, and if you have any two parts of this equation, you can solve for the other parts, okay? All right, so... Let's see what we're actually doing in lab. So for lab one, um, remember that you need to use pen in lab in all your labs. Sorry, not just for lab one. Um, so in your lab notebook, there should only be pen, no pencil. If you if you are using pencil, I'll probably just remind you um, for the first lab, but in the future you will you'll be you'll be marked down for that. Sorry. Um, okay, so for the first part of this lab, we're going to be determining the density of our metals using water displacement. So the first step is to get two different size, sizes of the same metal. So it can be aluminum or you can start with iron. Um, and you're going to make predictions about those um, metals. So um, the predictions that I want you to make are listed in your lab handout, um, but you'll be actually writing those predictions in your lab notebook. Okay. Um, the second step is you're going to get a third piece of that same type of metal. So if you started with aluminum, you're going to get another piece of aluminum. If you started with iron, you're going to get another piece of iron. Okay, you're going to weigh each one, and then you're going to record the masses in either table one or three. That just depends on which metal you have. Okay, um, and the way you're going to get those masses is by using a, um, this analytical balance here. And I'll, uh, I'll show you a little short demo of how to do that in lab. So you'll get your masses, you'll record those. Then you're gonna fill a plastic graduated cylinder with some water and record that initial volume in your table. I'm not gonna tell you how much water you can use. Um, you can just, as long as you record the initial volume and you don't oh, like fill it up all the way to the top because remember you have to have room for your metal, um, that's fine. So you can put as much water as you want, okay? Um, so record your initial volume in your table and I'm gonna leave it up to you to figure out the units for that, okay? Think about what units you would use to represent that. All right, and then step four, you're gonna place one of your metal samples into the graduated cylinder that you just filled with water, and you're gonna record the new volume in your table. So it's gonna raise the water level up, and you're gonna record that new volume, okay? And then for step five, you're gonna repeat those last two steps for another two for the other two samples of your metal. And then you're gonna record your data. You're gonna take these uh, same three samples. And now, so if you started with aluminum, you're gonna take all your aluminum samples um, and uh, find the density using a different method, okay? So in this method, you're determining the density by measuring with a metric ruler. So for step six, you're gonna transfer the mass data that you have for your three metals. The mass shouldn't have changed, right? Um, and you're gonna put that into either table two or four, depending on which metal you have. Um, in step seven, you're gonna use a metric ruler to measure both the diameter, which is this here, and the length of your um, sample of each sample, and then you're gonna record those values. In step eight, you're gonna be performing calculations to complete that table. So you'll notice there are a lot of different, um, uh, what are those, columns that we aren't actually measuring physically in lab. So you're gonna have to perform calculations to figure those out. If you get stuck, check your lab handout. There's um, some information in there about how to, how to do those calculations. Okay, and then in step nine, you're gonna return the three pieces of metal that you started with and get three new pieces of the other metals. If you started with aluminum, you're gonna get three, you're gonna return those to the cart and then get three pieces of iron, okay? You're gonna weigh them, record the new masses, and then repeat steps three through five and six through eight. So that's these three steps, filling your graduated cylinder with water, placing your metal samples in, doing that same thing for the other 
samples. And then six through eight is these ones here. Okay, and then you um, should be all set to go. So um, I will have a separate video posted later this week, probably about your post lab. So remember your post lab is due not this Thursday, but next Thursday in lab. So a week from um, the day that you actually do your lab. And um, that's going to be about um, entering some of your data in Excel and making graphs. So um, I'll have some videos that'll help you guys out with that. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I'll see you all in lab.